Hey everybody, welcome back to Mr. Sid Reads. I'm still on my lion theme, and today's read is The Lion and the Little Red Bird. What I like most about this book are the illustrations. The illustrator and the author are the same person, Elisa Clevin. And what Elisa Clevin does is she takes other objects other than paint, uh, yarn and fur and paper and objects of those kinds, and she incorporates them into the paintings and makes it feel more three-dimensional. The Lion and the Little Red Bird. Cute little story. Is this good, director? This way. <laughs> We're trying not to give you glare, guys. You can see your image is good. Perfect. One afternoon, a little red bird saw a lion with a brushy green tail. Now, we know lions don't have green tails. As green as the forest, the bird had never seen anything so unusual and so pretty. Just looking at it made her happy. Lion, lion, she said. Why is your tail so green? The lion didn't understand the bird's language. He thought she was simply chirping. He smiled at her. And wandered down to a field of orange flowers. The bird watched him roll and sniff. And chase butterflies. Then, slowly walk west with the setting sun and disappear into a cave. The bird waited on a tree nearby. She wanted to see the lion's green tail again, but the lion didn't come out of the cave, so the bird made herself a soft nest and slept through the warm, starry night. I'm not sure if you can see this well, but note how the tail looks like it's made of yarn. I feel like you actually touch it. In the morning, the lion came out switching his tufted tail, which was no longer green, but as orange as a flower. Orange as a butterfly, orange as the setting sun. Lion, lion, bird chirped again, astonished. What's your, t why is your tail so orange? Again, the lion didn't understand the bird, and he smiled at her. And climbed over a hill, and <clears throat> up the mountain. to a deep blue lake beneath a bright blue sky, where he soaked his tired paws while the birds splashed nearby. Look, there's another pride of lions over here. Check it out. I never noticed that in the book before, I have to tell you. At the end of the day, the lion climbed back down the mountain over the hill and home to his cave. By the way, lions don't live in caves. The bird settled down in the tree, wondering as the sky darkened about the lion and his orange tail. But in the morning, the lion's tail was no longer orange. It was as blue as the brightest blue sky, blue as the deep blue lake where he'd soaked his paws. Lion, lion, bird chirped enchanted. How did your tail change from orange to blue? Are you a magician? The lion just smiled. Check out the way they did the fur here, the hair. You can actually feel just something about the images feel, you can just reach out and touch it. And he ambled over to a bush full of shiny red berries. They were beautiful berries, but very sour. Lion, Bird chirped, making a face. These berries are still too sour to eat. Why don't you pick them when they're ripe? Lion just smiled, thinking how much he liked the sound of the birds chirping company. <laughs> All afternoon, the lion picked berries while the bird nibbled sunflower seeds nearby. Once, when the lion stepped on a thorn, the bird pulled it out for him. At sundown, the lion swished his tail goodbye and returned to his cave. 
the bird settled down in her nest. She wondered what color the lion's tail would be in the morning. She wished he would answer her questions. I bet you guys have figured out what color the tail's going to be now. Uh oh, but during the night a storm came. Thunder crashed and lightning flashed. Rain swept away the bird's nest. <coughs> Hearing this noise, the lion rushed out and reached up into the tree where the bird was crouched, shivering and scared, and he lifted her down. He's returning the favor. Do you recall the bird pulled a thorn out of his paw? He carried her into his cave where it was warm and colorful. The walls were filled with pictures of green forests, orange flowers, butterflies, <clears throat> sunset, a bright blue sky, and a deep blue lake. Lion, lion, bird chirped, delighted. How did these pictures get here? Lion smiled and dipped his tail into a bowl of shiny red berry juice and painted a picture of the bird chirping on a berry blush. The bird sang while the lion painted. She sang a song without any questions, full of color and joy. The lion had never heard anything so unusual and so pretty. Just listening made him happy. In the morning, the storm was past. The world shone fresh and bright. The lion's tail was berry red. And the little bird knew why. She sang her happiest song. And wondered what the lion would paint that night. The end. I love this book for a couple reasons. One, because the lion and the bird make friends and have done favors for one another. And then there's the mystery of how is this lion appearing with a different colored tail each day. And then, of course, there's the artistic component that the lion is painting inside a cave where lions don't even live. He doesn't even have his own pride. What's with all these components of the story? It makes it interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. Come back. There's a lot more. Bye.